When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live. And I brought you up as my son. Because you're a Lannister. Tywin states that he brought Tyrion up as his son, suggesting that Tyrion is possibly not his son, but was only raised as such. Earlier that season, and in a storm of swords, Tywin told Tyrion that Men's laws give you the right to bear my name and display my color, since I cannot prove that you are not mine. If you've watched my Dragon Rider theory, or even my rewind for Rhaegar and Lyanna, then you know my answer to the question, is Tyrion a secret Targaryen like Jon Snow, is no. He is not. Tyrion is the son of Tywin Lannister and Tywin's cousin, Joanna Lannister. But let's look at the evidence. The first evidence often brought up in favor of Tyrion being a secret Targaryen is his physical appearance. In the first book, Jon Snow describes Tyrion. One green eye, and one black one peered out from under a lank fall of hair, so blonde it seemed white. Green eyes are common among the Lannisters. The black eye, as proponents of A plus J equals T claim, could be a purple eye, so dark that it appeared black. Maester Aemon's brother, King Aegon V, was described as having such eyes in a similar dark setting that Jon saw Tyrion in. Egg had big eyes, and somehow his shaven head made them look even bigger. In the dimness of the lamplight cellar, they looked black, but in better light their true color could be seen, deep and dark and purple. Valerian eyes, thought Dunk. In Westeros, few but the blood of the dragon had eyes that color, or hair that shone like beaten gold and strands of silver woven all together. Tyrion's eyes are mismatched, black and green, just as a Targaryen bastard and half-sister of Aemon's grandfather, Darren II, and lover of their half-brothers, Bloodraven and Bittersteel, Shaira Seastar had mismatched eyes of blue and green. Tyrion's pale blonde hair also resembles more of what we see from Targaryens than the golden crowns of Casterly Rock and Lannisport. Tyrion's story also mirrors that of Rhaegar's son and sister. The Rise to Power The fall from power. The second chance at power. All three lost their mothers in childbirth. All three feel somewhat responsible for the death of a significant other. All three were held captive by a so-called savage people and ended up ruling them and making them some of their most loyal followers. The three heads were the only POV characters in the first book who didn't have the surname Stark, excluding the prologue, of course. Another nod at Tyrion possibly being a Targaryen is the story of his birth. The whole way from Dorne, all anyone talked about was the monster that had been born to Tywin Lannister. A head twice the size of his body, a tail between his legs, claws, one red eye. The privates of both a girl and a boy. Prince Oberyn's description of Tywin's monster mirrors that of another Targaryen the audience is familiar with. Monstrous. Twisted. I drew him forth myself. He was scaled like a lizard. Blind. With the stub of a tail and small leather wings, like the wings of a bat. Tyrion's birth parallels that of Rhaegar, Daenerys' child with Khal Drogo, and many of the Mad King stillborn children with Queen Rhaella, which Mad King Ares claimed were all bastards. But before anyone uses this as evidence that Tyrion is a Targaryen bastard, the point of Oberyn's story is that Tyrion is not that monster. We didn't try to hide our disappointment. That's not a monster, I told Cersei. That's just a baby. And she said he killed my mother. And she pinched your little cock so hard I thought she might pull it off until your brother made her stop. It doesn't matter, she told us. Everyone says he will die soon. I hope they are right. 
he should not have lived this long. Cersei and everyone else expected Tyrion to die, just like all of the other Targaryen half-dragon monster babies. But another interesting thought from Oberyn's story is that everyone thought that Tyrion was a half-dragon monster baby. The point of Oberyn's story is that Tyrion is not this, but it is significant that the entire realm thought otherwise. The theory that says Tyrion is a secret Targaryen states that his real father is Mad King Aerys, making him a half-brother of Daenerys Targaryen and uncle to Jon Snow. It is rumored that Joanna Lannister gave the Mad King her maidenhead and reigned briefly as one of his many, many paramours. This may seem a bit far-fetched, but as I stated in my Elia Martell video, Joanna Lannister and the Princess of Dorne were good friends, and wanted to join their houses in marriage. Sir Barristan Selmy tells Daenerys that her father was fond of Tywin's wife, and took liberties on their wedding night. Sir Barristan is a much more trustworthy source than Pycelle, who's the source of most of our denials. So if Barristan tells us that these liberties were not that serious, then the liberties were certainly limited to unwanted touching, which is still sexual assault, but wouldn't produce a child. Not long after this incident, however, Lady Joanna was dismissed from the Queen's service, and seldom visited King's Landing. Queen Rayella was also quoted as saying that she did not approve of her brother and husband turning her ladies into his whores. It seems rather likely that Tywin's wife had some kind of sexual relationship with Mad King Ares, but that relationship was not necessarily consensual. Sir Jamie recalls the night Daenerys was likely conceived as the Mad King raping Queen Rayella after burning his hand of the king alive. But as Tywin's only sister states, Tyrion is Tywin's son. In my Rhaegar and Lyanna Rewind, I mentioned that Jon Snow's personality and skill set mirrors that of Prince Rhaegar and hinted at his parentage. This is also true of Tyrion, who is almost a carbon copy of Tywin Lannister. The military strategist enhanced the false Baratheons and Targaryens were both shaped by their hatred of their fathers and the tragedy that befell the woman they loved, with Tyrion killing Tywin's wife Joanna in childbirth and Tywin having Tyrion's wife Tysha raped. Both men also had a fondness for sex workers and both have done terrible things to a woman they found in their father's bed. Tyrion has a compassion in him that often makes us forget that he can be just as cruel and calculating as Tywin. Tyrion's Aunt Jenna tells us that Tywin was big even when he was little, referring to how he was the only one to speak out about her marrying into House Frey when they were young. This line is reminiscent of lines from Varys, Maester Aemon, and Makoro referring to Tyrion as a small man casting a large shadow. Just before Tywin is murdered, he tells Tyrion, You're no son of mine. But the last word is, I am your son. I have always been your son. <laughs> Tyrion has always been Tywin's son. And that's the end of the conversation. In the books, Tyrion's response to his father's last words is, Now that's where you're wrong, father. Why well, I believe I'm you writ small. Some fans believe that Tywin hates Tyrion because he is the son of the Mad King who treated him terribly. But given the sheer number of similarities between Tyrion and Tywin, it is more likely that Tywin hates Tyrion as this ugly dwarf is the only child he can be certain is his. Like, comment, subscribe, share, check out my other videos. Special thanks to my first patron and first sword. If you would also like to become a patron, and gain early access to videos like this one, just click on the link in the description. Or if you prefer to donate without becoming a patron, try the support this channel button on the main page to donate directly through YouTube. In any case, thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more videos soon.